Hey, 20s and 30s in college nights, we're so glad that you are joining us tonight online. We're so glad that you are in the room with us, and we have an incredible night planned for you. Pastor Lewis has an incredible message as we're leading up to Easter he wants to share with you. But before we get there, we have a couple announcements that we need to tell you about. Oh yeah, the most exciting one that I cannot wait to let you know about is our WAKE event is coming this April 16th at 7 p.m. This is an opportunity for all regions to gather together under one roof, mm. and we get to lift up the name of Jesus at our gardens campus and we're going to really be in an environment where we get to invite other people that yep. maybe haven't come to our our local gathering and they get to come to this one and, and meet jesus maybe for the first time so mark your calendars april 16th 7 p.m gardens campus i love it and maybe you haven't heard yet but we're taking two mission trips this october two 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 <laughs> mission trips our 20s and 30s gathering we're going to be going all the way to uganda to serve in our college nights gathering we're going to be going to japan back again in october over. And listen, we cannot wait. But if you want some more information about it, you can simply simply text the word CFYA to 441441. And in our link tree, there's going to be a whole section about mission trips where you can sign up and lock in your spot to make sure you go with us this October. And a, and a really cool mission that we've got coming up even sooner is this month we're actually celebrating Easter as a church and it's gonna be an amazing opportunity for us to be the hands and feet of Jesus together by serving on our dream team. Yep. So if you haven't signed up yet to serve on our dream team, we wanna encourage you, bring somebody along, join one of the teams you don't usually serve on and let's share the love of Jesus with our region and beyond together at Easter services. Come on, I love it so much. Well, hey, make sure you grab your Bible, make sure you grab a notebook and a pen. We're about to jump into our message with Pastor Lewis. So let me pray for us as we jump in. Jesus, we love you. God, we thank you for your word. God, I pray over our message tonight that God, you would anoint Pastor Lewis that every word out of his mouth would be from you. Uh, that God, we wouldn't just hear about Jesus, but we would look more like Jesus because of tonight. Lord, we love you. We thank you. It's in your name we pray. And everyone said, amen. 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 Young adults, let's jump in with Pastor Lewis. We love you. You are a gift. You're a gift. Not to me, though. I don't think I know you. But you're a gift to Jesus. Come on, somebody. If you've ever struggled with self-doubt, if you've ever struggled with self-worth, if you felt like maybe I don't measure up, I'm here to tell you today, on this Easter week, that you are a gift. The Bible says that you are God's gift to Jesus. I, I, I love gift exchanges. I don't know how you were raised and what the culture of gift giving was in your family. I talked to some people uh, last week, and she said that, we didn't have Santa, we didn't have Tinkerbell, we didn't have the Easter Bunny. She said we had baby Jesus the whole time. <laughs> baby Jesus would give the gifts. Baby Jesus would take the tooth and put the money underneath. And baby Jesus would give the, the chocolate eggs on Easter morning. Her parents didn't want her to believe in any Santa, any Tinkerbell, any Easter Bunny at all. Some other friends of mine, uh, their, their parents went to the other extreme. I'm, I'm talking like 4 a.m. Cr Christmas morning. Dad dresses up in Santa outfit, like makes some noise outside of the window, climbs up on the roof with bells, starts stomping, making it seem like Santa's sleigh landed on the roof. Uh, they, they went all out for it. I, I don't know what you think about that, but the Easter Bunny might be coming this week. Who knows? Maybe in your house it's the Easter Bunny or baby Jesus. But tonight we're going to talk about a, a gift exchange, a gift exchange, because we're reading in, in our Gospel of John series. And this is a moment where this is the night that, that Jesus is betrayed. It's a significant moment. And, and Jesus prays this prayer to the Father. And this is what he says uh, in John chapter 17, verse 9. He says, my prayer is not for the world, but those you have given me because they belong to you. So, so Jesus in that moment is praying for you and he's saying, God, uh, Father, I'm praying for the ones that you gave me. You, you are God's gift to Jesus. Let that be the, the thing that settles in your identity. God wants me. Jesus wants me so much that he came to earth to die for me, take away my sins, give me new life. I'm, I'm wanted by Jesus. This Easter week, I need to let you know, you're wanted by Jesus. You are God's gift to Jesus. Think about the context of this prayer. Jesus has just lived his 33 years of life. He's done public ministry for the past three years. He's performed miracles, signs, wonders. He's taught people. He's called disciples to follow them. And, 
And just a couple of days ago, he walked into Jerusalem, riding on the, the back of a donkey, fulfilling so many prophecies. The crowds shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the, the name of the Lord. This is, this is high tide for Jesus. This is his moment. But he knows that at this time, it's Thursday night. He knows that Judas has just left the table. He knows that the conspirators are, are about to arrest him. He is with just now the 11 disciples who are there. He knows Peter's about to betray him. He knows that as soon as he says amen in this prayer, he's going to walk to a garden called Gethsemane. He's going to see a, a mob of people leave the, the gate of Jerusalem and descend the valley and then climb this mountain and He's going to see them. He's going to know exactly what they're coming to do. And he's going to stay there. He's going to be arrested. He's going to be denied by Peter. He's going to be interrogated by the, the high priests. He's going to be tortured by the Romans. And he's going to be crucified on a cross within the next 12 hours. He's going to be buried in a grave. And he knows that he will rise Again, so in this moment, in these last moments, he, he prays this prayer. It's called the high priestly prayer, if you want to take notes on that. It's a beautiful moment because we get to hear a conversation that Jesus has with the Father. The disciples are around the table. He knows the weight of the moment. He knows what's going on. And in this prayer, he gives us three gifts. In this prayer, he mentions three different things that are given to us as gifts. And so... I want to talk about a few of them. The first is the gift of salvation. The gift of salvation. Take a look here in John 17, verse 3 and 4. It says, now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I've brought you glory on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. What's the work that Jesus has to do? It's the work of salvation. But to understand this, we need to understand the, 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 where humanity is in, in relation to God. you got to understand that in the beginning was creation. It was perfect. Adam and Eve, they, they walked with God. And then we know this, the serpent came, tempted Eve and Adam, and, and they fell. This, was, this is why sin entered the world. This is why death exists. This is why we know what disease and disaster are. They're all effects of the fall. But I'm so grateful that God didn't leave us in our fallen state. He gave us a promise. And in the very first pages of the Bible, the promise is that one day a human would crush the head of Satan. We know that human is Jesus. And then he gave promises to, to Abraham that he would, through the descendants of Abraham, bless all the nations of the world. And through the people of Israel, God made the promise that through the people of Israel, salvation would come. And then Jesus is born. So, so I want you to track with me. You've got creation, the, prompt, the fall, the promise, and then you get the entrance of Jesus, the, the incarnation, the life, the teaching of Jesus, the, the death the burial, the resurrection, the power of Jesus. That is the hinge on which all of history swings. You've got creation, fall, promise, Jesus, and then he gives us another promise that he's going to come back, that he's going to make things right, that he's going to return. And that, that's the next thing that happens. Jesus will come back, and then we'll get a new creation. So you've got creation, fall, promise, Jesus, promise, uh, return, and then new creation. He's coming to make all things new. That, that's what salvation is. That's what this gift of salvation is. Not just for me, but it's salvation for the entire creation. John 3.16 says, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him wouldn't perish but would have eternal life. That's what Jesus came to do. What's the work that Jesus came to do? To return eternal life back to us. I'm so grateful for the, the gift of, of salvation. Death had power over us, but because Jesus came, he defeated the power of death. My, my sin, man, the punishment is that I should die, but Jesus came to satisfy that punishment and give me eternal life. Man, I'm, I'm so grateful for this. Ephesians 2 says this, um, that, that salvation 
is by grace and it's through faith. It's not by works. I couldn't work hard enough. I couldn't earn it. I couldn't achieve it. It is only Jesus. That's the first gift that Jesus gives us in this, in this prayer. The second gift is the gift of sanctification. Go ahead, write that down. The gift of sanctification. He, he says this in John 17. It says, my prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. So sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Sanctification, if you need a definition, it's like the, the process of being made holy. And, and it's a process. Come on. How many of you know that, that good things take time, right? Would you rather have barbecue that you pulled out of the freezer and tore the little piece of plastic off and put it in the microwave and locked in and ate it in two minutes? Or would you rather have barbecue that's been smoking on the smoker for the past 18 hours and you're, you're ready to go? Come on, would you rather have a, a perpetual first date that never ends and all you ask is what's your favorite color and how many siblings do you have? Or do you want a, a lifelong relationship? That's what Jesus is talking about. It's a, it's a lifelong, it's a time, it's a, it's a process of being made like Jesus. And how does that happen? Well, he says it right here. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. Somebody type your word, your word, your word is truth. There is no substitute for the word of God. The, the word of God is, is different than anything else. That's why we have to spend time with it. It's how we're, we're transformed into the image of God. It's the single greatest catalyst of spiritual transformation in our lives. We need the, the word of God. The Bible, it's, it's not just a book that you read. It's a book that you read and then it reads you. It points out the thing in, in my life that, that I need to adjust and I need to change so that I can look more like Jesus. The, the Bible is not just a book that you look at, it's a book that you look through. I start to understand life and understand my, my situations and reality through the Word of God, and that changes the way that I think and the way that I act. The Bible, it's, it's the only book that you'll ever read where it's not just you reading the book. The author of the book is with you and wants to explain it to you at every page, at every moment. Let's, let's enjoy the process of walking with God, of becoming more like Jesus, of opening this gift of sanctification. The third is, is this gift of glorification. I'm using some big words, but, but glorification. You gotta read this in John 17, it's verse 22 and 24. It says, I've given them the glory that you gave me so that they may be one as we are one. I'm in them and you are in me. May they experience such perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me and you love them as much as you love me. Father, remember these are the words of Jesus. I want these who you have given me to be with me where I am. I want them to see the glory that you gave me because you loved me before the world even began, but let's just go to the first couple, first couple words. Notice Jesus said, I have given them the glory that you gave me. It's not a, I will give them the glory, but it's a, I have given them the glory. W what does this mean? It's um, Ephesians, Ephesians 2 says that currently, right now, where you are, you are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. And I know you're like, no, I'm I'm not, I'm seated on a sectional and there's crumbs in between the Christians. I'm not in a heavenly place with Christ Jesus at all. But that is the reality of what we are as Christians. We are walking in this world, but we're not of this world. We belong with Jesus in heaven. God has given you his glory. What, what, is, what is glory? A great, great definition would be like it's the weight of something. It's the weight of a, a person, a legacy, a, a position. Uh, my friends in, served in the military, you understand this. When an officer of higher rank or of higher glory walks into the room, you stand up. Why? Because, because you recognize the glory that they have when they walk in. Now this will transform our lives when we recognize this. We have been given the glory that Jesus given, has given us. We've been given the rank 
at one point in scripture, he calls us ambassadors. We got, we're diplomats, right? We, we own this. We're of the kingdom. And whenever we understand the weight that is placed on us, it does something. So I'm from Florida. Um, I grew up with the sand. Uh, snow is a very foreign thing to me, but my parents, they say that they escaped the snow to, to have sand, and I'm grateful for it. I am. I'm grateful. But I got some friends from up north, and they say this, when I, roads are icy, which I don't even know what that is. I understand when roads are windy, the school bus can't go to school because the hurricane force winds would blow it over. I understand that. I don't know what icy roads are, but icy road. Okay, apparently the roads get icy. Some, something has to do with that. But they say this, whenever you're driving in snowy conditions, whenever you're driving on the ice, what you need to do is put weight in the back of your vehicle. So, so they've got sandbags, literally, that they'll, this, I know you're from Florida and this doesn't make sense, but they'll take sandbags and they'll put them in the, the bed of the truck. Why? Because it needs weight. And what does the weight do? It helps it drive a line. It helps it drive together. It, it weighs it down and the truck is able to drive straighter. I, I love this. Jesus says, I pray that they would recognize the glory that I've given them so that they would be one as you and I are one. The glory that Jesus gives us is the weight that aligns us together to be unified. Whenever I recognize that I'm not just me, but I'm, man, I'm, I'm following Jesus. I'm, a, I'm an ambassador of heaven. I belong to the kingdom then man, I start, to, I start to get in alignment with my Christian brothers and sisters here and around the world. I start to live in unity, not uniformity. It's not about being the same thing, but it's about having the same heartbeat. It's about letting that, that word sanctify us. It's about becoming more like Jesus, that we would, Jesus said, we've already been given the glory so that we could be unified. It's time that we be unified today by recognizing what it is that Jesus has given us. But there is a tension. There is a tension. We, we have been given glory, but we also will be given glory. Jesus says this uh, at the, the bottom of that, that verse. He says, Father, I want these whom you've given me to be with me where I am, and then they will see all the glory that you've given me. Whenever sin entered the world, perfection, which is God, could not, could not be within perfection, which, which was us. And because Jesus has saved us, he's, he's brought us together. So one day, whenever we enter that door, whenever we pass through that door of life at the end of our life, we're going to be able to see Jesus. We'll be, we'll be perfect like he's perfect. Holy in the image of, of the one who is holy, that, that glory that he's promised, we're going to be able to look at him and see him for who he is. And this is a, a prayer. Father, I want those whom you've given me to be with me where I am. I, I seem to remember there were some verses that said, ask and you will receive. Jesus is asking the Father, God, God I, I, I want my friends in South Florida to be with me where I am. I want that young adult community of Christ Fellowship to, to be with me. And I'm so grateful that if Jesus prays it and the promise is that if we ask for anything in his name, it will happen, I'm going to heaven. Come on, somebody. Your identity is locked in. Jesus has got you. You are God's gift to Jesus. And I don't think he's going to take his gift back. Man, we can rest in who it is that God has made us to be. I'm opening up a gift of salvation. I'm, my goodness, I have a relationship with God. I'm opening up a gift of sanctification, becoming more and more like Jesus every day as I submit to his truth, his word, and his will. And I, man, I'm, I'm opening up a gift of glorification where I can today here on earth begin to experience what it is that I will experience in heaven with Jesus. What great gifts that we have. But, but we did say it was a gift exchange, right? And in an exchange, you got to bring some gifts too. And, and Jesus, Jesus does want a gift. And it's the gift of you. Here he is, and he's offering you a gift of 
salvation, sanctification, glory. He's offering you the gift of eternal life. And what can you offer him? The gift of your life. To say, Jesus, I couldn't deserve any of this. I I couldn't work hard to achieve any of this at all. But God, I'll give you my life. That's, That's what Jesus wants. You are God's gift to Jesus. So friend, if if you have never given your life to Jesus, I'm going to give you an opportunity to do that today. And then to to all of us who you have given your life to Jesus, it's time to walk in the authority and the confidence that Jesus gave us. And as we enter in or as we're in and and continue this holy week, got Good Friday in a couple of days. We celebrate Easter Sunday this week. Let's remember what it is that Jesus died, was buried, and rose to life for. It was for you. To remember the the gifts that he's given us of salvation, of sanctification, becoming more like him, and then being with him forever. But if you've never, if you've never given your life to Jesus, you never prayed that prayer, I want us to, to pray that prayer together. You give your life to Jesus, he gives you these gifts, and your life will forever be different. Pray this prayer with me. Say, say, Jesus, thank you for loving me couldn't have earned these gifts. I couldn't have worked for them, but you've given them to me. So Lord, I give you my life. I turn from my sin. I'm going to follow you for the rest of my life, the rest I know, the rest of my life, the best I know how. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. We love you so much. Happy Easter. We're going to see you this Sunday for Easter Sunday.